Hi, my name is Dallin. I'm a third year medical student. And today I wanted to show you all how I go through a USMLE step one question. The one that I'm gonna go through today can be found on the sample test uh, on USMLE's website. Uh, you're gonna to wanna to make sure that you click the one that says tutorial. What's great about this is it gives you a feel of how the exam can be. It's free. Uh, now I know all the MBMEs are currently free. I don't know how many you can take for free, but I know that they are currently free uh, through May. Uh, so this is a great resource. I've linked the URL for, for this and other free resources uh, in the description below. So with that, let me show you how I go through a USMLE step one question. All right, so this is how I typically would go through a USMLE step one kind of question. Um, and so I'll, I'll do that with you guys now. So we have a 67 year old woman with congenital bicuspid aortic uh, valve. All right, so, so what I typically do is I highlight some of these abnormalities, bicuspid aortic valve. Um, that is starting to make me think, okay, could this be a, a aortic stenosis type picture um, could, with the defective valve? Um, is she coming in for an infective carditis? So these are the things that I'm thinking as I'm reading. Uh, she's admitted to the hospital, okay. Um, and then because of a two day history of fever and chills, all right, now I'm definitely starting to think that this is a infective carditis picture. So current medication is osinobrel. Um, uh, temperature is uh, 38, um, so she does have a fever. Her pulse is 90, respirations are 20, and blood pressure is 110 over 70. Now, this is important because she's not in shock, so I'm not worried about this question asking me something about septic shock or cardiogenic shock. Um, so I start thinking more that this is going to be, um, this question is going to ask me something either about the pathology behind infective carditis, what kind of bugs cause it, um, or it's going to ask me, um, something about the presentation or about the treatment. All right, so cardiac examination shows a grade three out of six uh, systolic murmur that is best heard. Okay, so she might have some aortic stenosis. Uh, I mean, typically they present earlier with the bicuspid aortic valve, um, and, it's, and it's heard right where I would expect it to be heard in the aortic um, valve right on that uh, second right intercostal space. Um, so then blood cultures grow, viridin's uh, uh, streptococci, which are susceptible, susceptible to penicillin. Okay, so now I know this is infective carditis. I know they're going to be asking me something about infective carditis. And likely it's going to be something about either the treatment or the, the bacteriology, the microbiology behind its presentation. Okay, so in addition to penicillin, all antibi an antibiotic synergistic to penicillin is administered. Okay, so now I'm starting to think, all right, what is synergistic with penicillin? And... Like I said, I, I memorized first aid. I turned it into an Anki deck and I memorized it. And so I, rem I know random facts and one of the more random ones, and maybe it's not random, but how I memorized it seemed random, was that aminoglycosides are synergistic with beta-lactams. So now I'm thinking, okay, what are they gonna ask me about aminoglycosides? Is it gonna be a side effect? Uh, is it gonna be the mechanism of action? Uh, is, it, is it gonna be resistance? I don't know, but I'll, we'll continue reading. So which of the, um, it is administered that may help shorten the duration of this patient's drug treatment. Which of the following is the most likely mechanism of action of this additional antibiotic on bacteria? So now I'm looking, okay, they're giving me mechanisms of action. I'm going to need to know which drugs have which mechanisms of action. Now, to do that, that is found in the following um, page of first aid. All the answers are currently located here. So I need to know where, um, what aminoglycosides mechanism of action is, and that is it inhibits that 30S subunit. So now I know that binding the 30S subunit is the correct answer. But if I were to be reviewing this um, as, as I was studying, or if you're somebody who only does questions, I would highly recommend that you do this. If you don't know the an the if you don't know how the other answer choices could be correct if a different question was given, you need to do that. And you need to make flashcards of any information that you did not know. Most of the information that you'll need is in first aid. And if it's not, you can Google it and, and find it elsewhere. But first aid is going to typically have the most accurate information to get you the correct 
answers. All right, so let's go through the wrong answer choices and how we could learn from them and when they would be correct. So binding to DNA-dependent RNA polymerase. Okay, so I know that this is the mechanism of action of rifampin. So if I were to reviewing this test and I didn't know what the binding to the DNA-dependent uh, RNA polymerase was, I'd make a flashcard of it and I would say this is rifampin. And if I didn't know anything about rifampin, I would go ahead and turn to first aid and refresh it. And then I would make a flashcard of anything that I didn't know about rifampin so that I could study it later. So that way when they ask me something about the treatment of tuberculosis, I'll be able to answer it without having to get it wrong and I can feel good about myself and, 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 and whatever. <laughs> All right. And then competition with P-aminobenzoic acid. All right, so let's say you didn't even know what P-aminobenzoic acid was. Um, I would write it down. It's P, it's P-A-B-A or PABA. I don't know how they say it in sketchy, but it's it's the mechanism of action of, of, of Bactrim. Um, and uh, the next, and, and that's actually also, again, in first aid. It's something that you could look up and make a flashcard of if you didn't know that. And then if you didn't know that the mechanism of action of trimethoprim uh, was to inhibit the dihydrofolate reductase, go, again, go ahead and make a flashcard of that right then in the moment. Um, so that's, that's what that looked like here. Now, for inhi inhibition of DNA uh, gyrase. Now, what does this? Well, the answer is fluoroquinolones. And if I were making a note card of this, I would I, would, I might as well learn the entire drug now. So I would, I would talk about its mechanism of action uh, within the note card, or flashcard. I would make an, another flashcard that talked about the use of it. So what, what are organisms does it cover? Um, what type of infections should I be treating it with it? And then I would go in and make another flashcard of the adverse effects, which are a lot. A, a, one that they love to test on is prolonged QT because patients can die from torsades de point. And then I would talk about, and then I would also make a final one of uh, the mechanisms of resistance. It, it's, it's very, it, do, it does take some time, um, but then you won't be getting these questions wrong later when they are asking about fluoroquinolones or when they're asking about rifampin or when they're asking about Bactrim. You'll be able to get those questions right every time uh, from then on. So, so even though it's more work up front, it ends up saving you time in the future. All right, I hope you enjoyed the video. If you have any further questions or if you'd like me to go through other questions with you individually or, or just on the, on the channel, uh, go ahead and let me know in the comments below. If you haven't already subscribed, please do so. Uh, and like always, if you have any further questions, go ahead and email me at medicineformuggles at gmail.com.